Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In the previous episodes, we have discussed the life of Stanisław Wojciechowski, Poland's second president, who was elected in 1922 and unseated by Marshal Pilsudski's May Coup in 1926. In this episode, inspired by the life of Wojciechowski, we reflect on the differences between the politicians of old and the ones we have today, and the balance between realism and idealism in international politics. There is nothing that uh, technically stops uh, a power. Of course, there are huge uh, geographical distances, but a navy can travel anywhere in the world. Well, of course, that was the that was the British experience. <laughs> oh yes, the navy. You you didn't. We saw the sea as both a, a defence between us and continental Europe, mm. but also a highway to link together uh, the various. Um, overseas territories which formed part of the then British Empire. Yes, and looking at the expansion of the, uh, of the Chinese Navy uh, and also the, the simultaneous uh, stagnation, you could say, in uh, there are simply aren't resources for the US Navy to keep spending the money that they once did on their Navy. They, they still have uh, a large advantage that has, has been built up uh, over decades, but it's quickly being uh, eroded. Uh, so wh who knows what the situation of Europe will look like in 20, 30 years? Well, indeed, and as we so, so we're, we're ranging far and wide, but that's what makes history mm -hmm. so interesting. But when you see the obsession we have in the West, and by the West, I mean Europe, um, North America, um, Australia, New Zealand, those sort of places, with what you and I would probably regard as completely ridiculous, mm -hmm. self-indulgent. Uh, self self indulgence, and I'm thinking of you know putting down statues because somebody once upon a time may have had a link with slavery. Yes. At the same time as accepting money from the Chinese government for mm. professorships, research, a country which is actually actively engaged even as we speak mm. in, in in both slave labour camps for sure. manufacturing, and indeed slavery camps as a way of indoctrinating people and and, and removing populations they, of which they disapprove. Organizing World Cups in Qatar, uh, exactly. having uh, ongoing slave markets taking place in Libya, uh, slavery still being uh, rampant in, in Mauritania or in various parts of, uh, of the Arab world where uh, you can have these, technically they are maids, but uh, their passports have been taken away from them and they work for uh, 16 hours a day without getting any pay, just, just being given food. Um, we are very um, Eurocentric uh, in, in this case, where we, we tend to only look into uh, the problems that existed in our own uh, civilization 200 years ago or so. Uh, I think the, the uh, abolition of slavery in, in Great Britain was the 1820s, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So we are, we are right now almost 200 but years away from get, that you know, moment. In the modern, because you, one gets mm. no thanks for that. It's not seen as a development. Mm. It's, well, they shouldn't have been slaves in the first place, so you're very bad. Yes. So the United Kingdom, the United States, mm. two countries which I think everybody would, I mean, educated audiences would, would agree are probably you know, civilised places. And in the UK, there's you know, much less racial tension than in many other places. Mm. Still, as each day passes, we're more and more racist, allegedly. Yes. And it's very strange. Mm. I think somebody said that hard times produce hard men, which mm. produce good times, which produce weak men, which and produce bad times again. And I think that's what we're... We have, I think, what, what it seems to me, when you look at this, the whole sweep of history, what we have in Europe now, it seems, is increasingly, and, and the United States, unfortunately, is a sort of decadence mm -hmm. of thought. Yes. We, people do not actually respect... I mean, when you have... And, and I read in the, one of the papers the other day, some American academic, I forget from which university, mm -hmm. now questioning whether the classics, the Latin and mm -hmm. the Greek, and the history, yes. and the philosophy is somehow something should, that should not no longer mm -hmm. be studied. And this is a man who's actually chosen an academic career. It makes you wonder what has gone wrong. What, where have these minds been? And I think the only word I can mm -hmm. think of, how have these minds been poisoned? Yes. I mean, fortunately in Poland, when mm -hmm. we look back, and because history here is so alive, mm -hmm. people do seem to have a much clearer understanding of what is important and what isn't important. Yes, we had hard times much more recently than, yes. <laughs> than many so people in we Western have, Europe. So we have stronger men. Uh, yes, uh, th there, is, uh, there is a saying uh, which I think uh, explains uh, a lot of the difference. Uh, it's uh, the year of 1968. In the West, 1968 is, of course, uh, the Cultural Revolution, 
this uh, rebellion against, uh, well, as you mentioned, the foundations of what, what is consist, uh, considered Western civilization, whether uh, the family as, as, a, as a social unit or uh, um, the Greek classics and so on. While in 1968, uh, here in Poland, but also in Eastern Europe more widely, um, it was uh, a rebellion, uh, uh, a nationalist rebellion, you could say, where uh, these countries, they opposed their, uh, the Soviet domination of their country. So they were fighting for uh, national independence, uh, na national identity. Um, so uh, one year, uh, very, uh, very, a very big impact of, of these events, but uh, directed in two completely uh, different directions. Uh, so I, I think that explains a lot of, of, of the current differences and also the hardship uh, for uh, the East to understand the West and for the West to understand the East. So sometimes when we see these um, clashes taking place in, uh, on a European stage in, in Brussels, in the European Parliament, for example, uh, where some of these more uh, progressive powers uh, con completely condemn what is happening in countries such as Poland or Hungary, uh, I think simply there's a, a lack of understanding for the other side and uh, they, they aren't really aware of uh, where the Eastern Europeans are coming from. Now, Adam, I'm just going to have to interrupt you there. As usual, the studio clock is blinking in the corner, saying that we must bring this episode mm -hmm. to a halt, but we will, with your permission, take up the story next time. There we are. I've had to stop Adam almost in mid-sentence. But we will be back on Poland Daily History in the next episode to pick up where we left off. Thank you for watching and do join us next time on Poland Daily History.